Hello, let's try out this new format with the camera enabled. In today's video I will be showing off the reflections in the Wicked engine. So I opened the editor with the sponsor model. Let's check out that light in the corner. So these are the specular reflections of the light, which are the simplest form of reflections in the engine. You can select the floor, open the material window and tweak its parameters to modify the look of the reflections. If you modify the roughness down, it will make the reflections smaller and sharper. If you scale it up to 100%, it will be completely blurred out and then very large. The reflectance slider will modify the reflectance, so if it's zero, it's not reflective, it's only diffuse. It's 100%, it's very reflective, it's like, like a mirror, but you can see it more if you disable the normal maps and reduce the roughness, that it's a very mirror-like. And Actually, you can see the clouds behind those light specular reflections. So the light specular reflections are the blue dot, because the light is blue, and then the clouds are what you see above the scene. It's the same, but rendered in slightly lower resolution. Anyway, there are also the uh, beside the reflectance there is also the metalness slider it acts kind of similarly but if you increase it to 100% then the reflection color will be tinted by the base color of the surface let's use the reflectance now set it to 100% and these sky reflections are not a good way to represent our scene but it's something there by default actually if you close this and modify the weather settings like the horizon color or such or the zenith color is better if you modify this zenith color then the reflection also changes that kind of thing either way it's not a good way to represent our scene in the reflections you can capture the scene inside an environment probe by opening the end probe window and putting a new probe in front of the camera. This will capture the scene from all directions. As you can see it's static uh, since the curtain is not moving and if I move the probe it's also not changing the contents. Uh, but I can enable real time on it and it will update it every frame. The curtain is now moving and if I move the probe, the reflections that it generates are also moving, as you can see. However, this is still capturing the reflections from this single point. So if I move farther away, the reflections uh, don't, don't make any sense anymore. For these reflections, also you can see that the floor is not reflective here. So this is because Inside the reflections, there is no way currently to generate reflections. So also for these kind of reflections, you can also let's disable real time for now, and you can also select the material of the floor now. And if you modify the roughness, you will see that the reflections get blurrier, as kind of you would expect from the rough reflections. You can place many probes too, like let's say we place a probe here into this corner with the light. I put it here, but as you can see it's not changing the reflections on the floor to be more closely representing this kind of reddish view. It's only showing the reflections from the first probe. That is because the global environment probe it can be, it, there can be only one global environment probe the rest of the environment probes if you want to use them you must set them to local and uh, you can just do that by sort of selecting the probe and scale it, it, scaling it so this bounding box you see in cyan color represents the range of the probe if you scale it 
to reach other geometry, you will see that it uh, starts to affect that part of the floor kind of uh, better than just a global and probe. It also uses some parallax correction, so within its range you can almost see it as if it was a, a room inside the floor. This would be best used if you have a, like a single room and you can place a reflection probe in the center of it and then scale it up to be the same size of the room, roughly. Then like the rough reflections will provide a sort of good results. You can also have multiple local and probes as, as I said, so you can scale this one up too. And so here is one environment probe and here is the other one. You can also sort of move these on top of each other and they will blend together in a way that makes most sense. And there is also a possibility to set these as a real time as well. So I set this to real time. As you can see, it sort of tries to update the curtains movement right there. And uh, this will also work properly, but well, almost properly with roughness. This is not uh, really like physic physically based, but uh, it's something that you can use. If you sort of have enough of these uh, environment probes, you could, uh, for example, use planar reflections. Okay, I still have the floor selected with its material and I can enable the planar reflection shader on it with this, that has the planar reflections PBR plus planar reflections. So these planar reflections are much more accurate, as you can, as you can see. Um, these are a bit lower resolution than your than your real camera resolution, but because they are not as important as your main view, it's I think it's acceptable. It's a kind of a payoff between the low resolution and better performance. Anyway, if you, for example, increase normal maps on the floor, the lower resolution is not even visible anymore. And these planar reflections you can only use on single planar surfaces. So for example, this floor is actually not a single plane. You can see a single plane here where the reflections work properly, but the same material is used above, on the floor above. And you can see here that the reflections are completely garbage, and that's why you can't use it on more than one plane. But these reflections would be also used on water surfaces or the ocean. Let's disable the planar reflections here and um, let's load the model. So I loaded that simple water plane model that's uh, that you can find in the content slash models directory is this simple like water plane so it's been generated into into the middle of the scene I just move a, move it above a bit and you can see kind of the planar reflections working on this too properly and you can also rotate it and the, the reflections will still work properly. but only if you are using a single plane of reflective surface. Anyway, I delete it now. And uh, yeah, you can also imagine that if I enable the ocean here, let's do that. Increase the water level by a bit. The reflections sort of also work here in a way. Yeah, the, the light intensity is just too big out here, but inside it looks fine. Well, let's just <clears throat> okay dis disable the ocean for now. And after planar reflections, there are the the screen space reflections, and those are useful for any kind of surface. 
You can enable them in the proce process window, in the SSR checkbox. And uh, here you see that these are completely dynamic reflections. But since they are a screen space post process, they they will not work correctly behind objects or outside of the screen. For example, if I enable cinema mode and you check out the sides of the screen, you, se you see that this, those reflections kind of fade out on those edges. Also, if you aim the camera downwards completely, then almost all of the reflections disappear, which are the, caused by the screen space reflections effect. But they can fall back on those um, environment probe reflections, so they can still look pretty good. Let's um, exit the cinema mode with the ask button and uh, the material window. You can, you can see that roughness gets applied to these reflections in a very nice way. They have this nice uh, elongated uh, fall off. They can respect roughness really nicely. They are most useful in these rough surface surfaces where you where it's harder to see the artifacts. Also, behind objects, of course, if you, uh, if I grab that vase, move it here, then you will see that reflections behind the object are completely messed up, where there is no, not enough uh, screen space information. So after screen space reflections, the next step you can take is to enable the ray traced reflections that that is if you have a proper ray tracing enabled GPU like I have a GTX um, or RTX 2060 in this laptop and I use the Vulkan renderer it's only available in the Vulkan or the DX12 rendering modes so Okay, disable the SSR screen space reflections and enable the ray traced reflections here. If its uh, checkbox is disabled, then you means you can not use this, but I can use it now. They know most of the stuff the screen space reflections know, but they don't disappear of the screen. But they support proper roughness. And uh, yeah, of course they support any kind of surface, not just planar surfaces, so this also works properly. Also, the same thing with the screen space reflections. There are still some artifacts with these ray trace reflections. You can see if I increase the roughness, there are not enough rays that we can uh, trace Per frame to have uh, this fully correct uh, glossy rough behavior but we use temporal accumulation of, and if I move the camera you can observe some noise on the bottom of the screen where there is not enough valid temporal information. Also if I decrease the roughness you can see that if I enable the reflectance of this column, decrease the roughness of the reflectance, disable normal maps. You can see that ray trace reflections work kind of perfectly with this column, but if you look at it inside the reflections, inside of the re ray trace reflections you cannot have another ray trace reflections right now, just uh, for uh, achieving real-time performance. This is uh, just a solution for it is to just use the static environment probes on those parts inside the reflection. Okay, so this is it for ray trace reflections. Another thing you could check out is the voxel GI, voxel global illumination. You can enable this here in the renderer window. You can enable reflections for this also separately. And these are very inaccurate. They, I, I wouldn't say this is a very good implementation of the Voxel GI. I implemented this a very long ago, but it's still here. Something you can play around with. You can decrease voxel size here to, to see what kind of reflection uh, does it support. So 
you can see it's heavily like voxelized. Not very accurate, but it supports dynamic and well, it doesn't disappear off the screen. The Voxel GI also supports a diffuse, so that's something to be that that you might find interesting anyway. That's it for the Voxel GI. The last thing I would like to show is the path tracing GI, which is not a, not a real time. It's more of an offline process. It can be used to as a reference kind of path tracing. You can you can kind of see how this scene would look like in real life, sort of. You can enable this in this uh, render path combo box. Just change the default to path tracing, and uh, you can see that a very noisy and very slow image appears. I will just uh, reduce the resolution uh, drastically so that it still runs fine, and I increase the ray trace bounces so more light uh, rays bounce around and scene will be a bit brighter and uh, you, you can see it's very noisy it accumulates over time noise will start to disappear over time this is a target sample count this is how many frames it will take to kind of arrive at the solution you want then that is when it will reach 100% here if you have a denoiser enabled in the engine such as I have now, then after 100% it will start to denoise the image. Yeah. I try to reduce the target sample count now, so the denoiser kicks in immediately. If it reaches 100%, the noise is completely removed from here. And the denoiser is not enabled by default in the engine. You will have to you will have to download the open image denoiser from the GitHub and you can reach out on the Discord or see the documentation how to have incorporate it into the engine. Once you incorporated it, it will just kick in automatically in the path tracing render path and also in the light map baking. More on that in a later video. Anyway, this path tracing can generate all kinds of effects like, as you see, diffuse, uh, correct uh, speculars also supporting the roughness. Also if you select anything in the scene and you have translator tool enabled, it will uh, reset the accumulation every frame so it won't converge. Let's try to converge a bit faster. Okay, this is now how it looks when it's denoised. You can play around with the path tracing a lot. You can also use this without a ray tracing GPU, however, it will be much, much slower. You can also use the non ray tracing version of it in the DX11 rendering mode. But if you use, still use ray tracing, but software implementation of it, which is much slower. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you found it interesting. Feel free to drop a comment down below for the Discord channel. See you in the next video.